After Solid State Logic introduced the D-Series console in 1979, music would never be the same again. In this video, we head to Echo Town Studios in Dorset with SSL expert Karen Down for a hands-on demo of the revolutionary automation technology that took the 1980s by storm. My name is Karen Down. I worked on my first SSL console when I was 18 years old, and I worked for Solid State Logic for 25 years in the service department, and I got to travel the world teaching people how to use these consoles, and also, in later years, how to fix them. The SSL 4000E series console was launched in 1979, and this is the console that evolved and dominated the music industry for the next two decades. This was the console that integrated a computer into an inline console, and today, Using this 6000 E series console, we are going to look at the automation, the total recall, and the physical computer itself. In the SSL computer we have with us today, we have the program disk that has the program data written in assembler, 16 bit, on it. And we have a real disk on which we're going to have our titles, our total recalls, our mixes, our cue lists, track lists, etc. A floppy disk is 1.44 megabytes. The program that the SSL was built around was 256 kilobytes. The genius of the SL4000 system was the fact that it integrated tape machines, consoles, and outboard gear. That was disparate pieces of gear that the engineer had to use separately. The 4000 series console brought in EQ, dynamics, auxes, onto channels, and it solved the problem of machine control. You were able to drive the transport of a tape machine from the console. You could track arm, punch in to record, and you also had bus tape switching available to you. Right, Chris, we have a 24-track tape that I would like you to put onto this tape machine. I've never done this before. Yeah, it's great. Pop your finger in to catch it. And then just pull it round. I think if you just um, push it, put, put your finger there mm -hmm. and then move it round a bit. There we go, just so it gets a little bit more. There we go. Now press stop. There we go. Press rewind. Click these? Yes, click these down. And rewind. Well done. So today we are going to be working with 32 channels worth of automation. Now that is very different from the tracks that you have today. For example, in Pro Tools, you can have 192 channels in a Pro Tools session, and you can automate all of those channels if you wished. This console has VCAs. Now, a VCA is a control device which is going to aid the computer to remember what the positional data is. All it has to do then is play back that information. It will basically disconnect from the fader, you can pull the faders down and still be replaying your mix. The only time the faders are going to reconnect is when you drop them back into right and move the fader. For those of you who are used to Pro Tools, you will recognize some of the automation modes that I'm going to be going through today. The write mode, the read mode, for example. But you will see that the SSL automation system is quite powerful and does a lot more than you would think a system designed in 1979 would do. SSL didn't invent automation systems. There were automation systems already in use, and one of them was the Allison automation system. And that involved recording the data 
onto a track of the multi-track tape and then bouncing that track with updates to another track. So typically we use tracks 1 and 24 and whilst replaying on one of those tracks we would be recording the updates on another track. Pretty terrifying. Data entry into the console is via this command line keyboard. And this became muscle memory for a generation of engineers. We've got the command line interface here and the QWERTY keyboard just here. Before we start looking at the automation, we are going to look at some of the housekeeping side to the SSL computer. So to begin our session, we will type the word begin and boot the computer. And here it is loading. Once it is loaded, it's given us a nice sign on message. If you wanted to actually change that message, you would type the word sign space and then the message you wish the SSL computer to give you. The next thing we see is a page called the label page. You can see that we've filled it out a little bit and if I wanted to just add myself in there, I would type AS for assistance, space and my name. The next thing we'd need to do is figure out where the start of our song is. We'd be playing our tape and when we get to the start of the song, we are going to stop and press name, title and the name of our song. We are just going to call it song. And there we have a list of songs that we have stored on this three and a half inch floppy disk. We can see that the song starts at time code reference point, 7 minutes, 39 seconds. We have a track list here. We are going to put the information on the track list into the computer. We are going to use the name command again and press the word track. Again, this is a job for the assistant engineer and he would sit there and slowly, very slowly, one key at a time, pop in the tracks. Next one is the snare and next one here is rack. Once he'd finished doing that, we would press end and this would save it to the floppy disk. We'd rewind a bit to the start of our song at this point and we'd need to start a cue list. This is going to be verse, chorus, etc, etc. And we start using our name command again, name, Q, and we'll go verse 1. And there we have it. We continue to play and then eventually we would be name, Q, chorus 1. And we could see us growing the cue list like this. Then, if we wanted to locate anywhere, we could say go to Q V1. And we would be locating the tape machine back to Q1. We also have the ability to cycle between queues as well. Our tape machine's located and stopped. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is look at creating some total recall setups. This is a picture of all the controls on the channels and the fader positions taken and stored on the three and a half inch floppy disk. We do that by pressing the commands name setup and we give it a name K1. Press execute and it takes a little while before it stores the setup. It's asking us to press the independent buttons which we'll talk about later. These are on the faders just so it knows about that and we press execute to finalize 
the storing of our total recall setup. Let's say we needed to recall that setup. What we would need to do is say play setup. As we're on K1, that's all we needed to do. But if we weren't, we would type K1. Once we press execute, we will get the total recall screen up on our computer monitor. Using Autoscan allows us to have the computer take over the responsibility of scanning through the desks looking for mistakes. We would be adjusting each channel strip and then as soon as we'd adjusted the last control, it would jump to the next position on the desk where there is an error and we would move through the desk until we had done all 32 channels worth of corrections. If we look at the screen now, we can see a pictorial representation of channel 24. I will be able to adjust the controls so they match what is on screen. We can see if I just work on the cues, you can see me adjusting the controls until the indicator goes out. And you can see this is a very long-winded process. Anything with a rectangle next to it means it's in either on or off position. So you just need to match them up. We can see here that the cut button cuts, so we'd undo that and we'd move the fader to match the position there. If Autoscan was running, this would now jump to the next channel. That's, that's it. And you can imagine on a 96 channel console how long that took. We're now going to look at the SSL automation. We are parked right at the head of our song. So we are going to type the words setup mix. Enter. We are in new mix. The faders have switch themselves to absolute. This is right mode for all of you Pro Tools users. We've got a mix on the console. And when we press play, we are going to be writing data and it is going to be faders and mute data. We press execute to start following the on-screen instructions. And there we go. You can see the adjustments of the fader levels on the screen. And when I cut, you can see that we lose the level. If we look at the screen, we can see that we are mixed running and that we have time code playing. We're going to make this quite a short mix. So we're going to stop and we're going to save the mix by pressing end. Asks us if we want to name the mix. We don't need to. We'll just give it a number, press enter again, and we can see there we are, mix number one. About 30 seconds long. We then go to mix. And there's a sound we haven't heard for a long time. Once the tape machine is parked, it will tell us it is now updating mix number one. The desks has switched itself into trim mode, which is read for those Pro Tools users. And we can use the fader status button in the center of the console to switch us between replay, absolute and trim or replay, write, and read. If we're just going to be working on one fader, for example, fader 20, I can just switch that into absolute. This position we're at is called the head of the mix. I'll be referring to that as we work through this little tutorial. We press execute to start the tape and to start writing data You can see that my other faders are replaying and the cut should happen soon. 
And it is as easy as that. If I find that I wish to drop this fader out of right, I simply press the fader status button. So we are going to update mix one. We are parked at the head of the mix and we want to use the absolute command. We type either U or number one to select it. Now we know that we are going to be updating by absolute or we are going to drop the faders into right when we press the fader status button. Press execute and pressing the fader status buttons, we are dropping those channels into right. Once we're finished, we'll press the fader status button and drop them back into replay. And you can see what I'm doing reflected on the screen. It's as easy as that. You would just rewind, play again, choose an update mode, end to save the mix and continue. So let us look at something that the faders will be doing in right mode. Just going to um, rewind a little bit. Press play. You notice we're in mix review now. We're going to drop into right. Stop. And we're stopped at 7.18. Going to rewind a little bit. We're going to press play. And at 7.18, we're going to go from replay back into right, as we did there. Then when we're ready to drop out of right, we simply hit the fader status button. It is as easy as that. There is an awful lot more to the SSL automation system. So we'll take a look at that. I'm just going to save my mix, press execute to name it, and then press go to mix to go back to the head of the mix. We're going to start back updating our mix. So we are going to press execute. Yes. And now we are going to press option number three for auto takeover. Basically, I'm going to drop into right. I'm going to be moving the fader. And now I want to drop back into replay, matching the underlying automation data. To do that, I press the fader status button with auto takeover selected. The light will flash in the direction I need to go. Green for up, red for down. And as soon as I cross the point where the data matches, I will drop back into read. I can now save my mix again and return to the head of the mix. The automation system isn't just the automation modes that you see at the head of the mix. There is also a setup page that you can go into to have the modes work in a certain way. We get into that by pressing Setup. Do we want to see more? Yes, we do. We press Y and we can see we can look at session information or we can look at mix information here. So we press the mix button and here we can set up whether we want the five automation modes to come up as standard without us having to select them. And we can see other modes that we may want to alter. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to make a change, for example. Insert mixing, yes. Okay, end again. Do we want to see more? No, we don't. So we're ready to go back to mixing. Go to mix takes us back to the head of the mix. There are a couple modes for updating cuts or mutes. Those are play cuts only, which basically leaves the faders in 
absolute and the cuts playing the data. And this was useful for when sometimes you had to put three or four different instrumental parts onto one track. So one of the first things you do in Numix is mute where different sections of instrument was playing. Then you would put the desk in play cuts only. You would have spread across the desk all of your instruments playing when they should, the cuts coming on when they should. And then if they were a little wrong, you could use the revise cuts option, option number two to fix those issues. The next one we're going to look at is immediate pickup. This is number five. We can press number five or I to turn it on. And what will, this will do on a VCA system is allow us just to move the fader a very small amount to drop it into right. The next mode we're going to look at is Preview. We can turn that on by pressing the number four or the letter P and we're going to preview in absolute. This allows us to rehearse any moves before committing to them. So we may have some underlying mix data and we're not sure if we can write something better. So we press execute to continue. We're in preview and to drop the fader into preview we press the fader status button, flashing light appears, and we can, we can stop, fader stays in preview, we're rewinding, we press play, and once again, we are previewing the level. Once we like that, we can rewind, drop into write and write it for real. Once we're happy with that, we can use auto takeover, turn on number three, press the fader status button and it'll flash in the direction we need to move the fader to get to the underlying mix data. And as we cross the threshold, we drop out of write. We press end to save our mix. We're rewinding to the head of the mix. And once we get there, we're going to look at trim. Trim allows us to either increase or decrease the levels written in the underlying mix data. We don't need to turn on any options. We will instantly be in trim the minute we drop the fader into right. Press execute to continue. Hit a fader status button, we drop into trim. And I'm now trimming this fader up about 10 dB. If I want to return to the reference mix again, we turn on option three, press the fader status button and again use auto takeover, this time moving the fader down until we cross the reference mix position threshold. We drop out of right, we're back in read. Stop there for a moment. Rewind. Now, I am going to switch us into absolute for our next update. Drop into absolute, write some data, rewind. I quite liked where the level of that fader was when I got to the end position. I would like the level of say that guitar to be written from the point that I press a certain button. So I finished with that fader in absolute at around minus five, I was happy with that. I've rewound and now I want it to take that level from the beginning of the chorus, for example. I'm going to press play chorus is coming up and I'm going to hit join. That will instantly drop the fader into absolute, writing at the level we were at when we rewound. The next mode we're going to look at is revise. We are going to look at that mode using trim. So we're going to take off 
update absolute. We're going to press play. And we are going to drop the fader into trim. Removing the fader, finding a position that we wish to trim the instrument by, down a little bit. Okay. Now, we rewind to the beginning of the chorus. If we press join, we will drop into right with any level difference in the fader reference and the fader itself being heard. If we press revise, we will drop into right matching the underlying mix data. I'm going to press revise this time. So even though the fader is at a different position than it, when it was when I rewound, it will drop into right matching the underlying mix data. I can then do my trim up, turn on auto takeover, press right, and two lights flashing, by the way, mean the cut button's in the wrong place. And we move the fader down, cross the reference mix threshold, and we drop out of right. Stop, end to save the mix. We were talking earlier about working in trim. We drop into trim again. And just say we move the faders up, we light the trim, we stop, we rewind. We can't trim a trim. What we can do is choose, when we press the fader status buttons again, whether we will drop into right matching the underlying mix data. That means the mix data that we had just written. Or we can jump back to the mix data saved on the hard drive. So that is a choice that you need to make. And that is the choice of insert mixing on or off in the mix setup menu we looked at earlier. We have been mixing in a very uh, linear fashion. Uh, this computer is capable of editing the mixes offline. You can actually have two mixes and join mix A to mix B. If you had a chorus in mix A that you wanted to put into mix B, it is just a matter of putting in the right commands with the right timecode values, and instantly you've created a new mix offline. A little bit more technical doing it nowadays, but we did have the functionality on the 4K. We also have the ability to trim mixes offline. Again, command line, and we could trim up the mix by 5 dB, for example, without running the tape. Another cool feature was the VCA trim pot on the console. This actually changed the headroom of the console. And anything, any channels selected to independent wouldn't be affected by the trim, but anything grouped to group zero to eight would change its level by the trim amount. We're going to look at soft grouping next. Now this is where we can have any sort of switches grouped together. Now I am typing in a command on the keyboard set up preset. And the computer does let me know when I make a mistake. That was the name I put in as the assistant on the session. And it can sometimes use the engineer's name, but it's told me that he doesn't understand what I have just put in. What I should have done was just type the word preset. And here we can see the different types of soft groups that we can have appear. Slave, fader and cut, fader only, cut only. We will stick with slave, fader and cut. So if I group master, red button, and slave, we then have our first software group. 
I can then come out of that and then just by pressing a cut button I've grouped together two cuts and if we have VCA to meters turned on I can see that I am moving tracks 19, 20 and 21 controlling that level. That's all for now. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like and share it and subscribe and click the bell icon so you know when we upload new content to our YouTube. Also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.